This provides an overview of the timeline assignment, A Dividing America, 1789 to 1860, the sources of sectionalism between North and South. This will show you what you need to do for the assignment. I'm providing you a template to complete this timeline, but first we're going to go through the first part of it from 1790 to 1840. You will be completing parts of the timeline between 1840 and 1860. So let's take a look. First we see the dates here, and we see the events that are listed beside each date. If we click on each of these items, we can see what they represent. For example, in 1789, there were constitutional protections for slavery that are described here. I don't identify the actual protections, but I point out that by protecting slavery, the Constitution created North-South tensions when the North decided that it didn't like slavery. It became dissatisfied with the protections in the Constitution. That's pretty obvious, so let's close this. The Hamiltonian program of Alexander Hamilton of Alexander Hamilton divided America economically and slightly sectionally. What I mean by that is that Americans by class tended to be divided on whether Hamilton's program was a good thing or a bad thing, but it didn't really divide North versus South very much. The Alien and Sedition Acts of 1798 did divide Federalists from Democratic Republicans. The Democratic Republicans were against the laws. The Federalists were for them. And so that promoted partisan divisions, divisions between the parties. But this created sectionalism only to the extent that the two parties were sectional in nature. That is, the one party was mainly Southern and the other party was mainly Northern. And that just wasn't the case in this time period. So this did not create North-South divisions. The prohibition of the importation of slaves from abroad in 1808 resulted in the end of importing slaves from abroad. However, Southerners found that they could increase slavery by encouraging natural increase among their slaves and the United States became the only country where slavery grew through natural increase. This, of course, would bother the Northerners when they became anti-slavery in their way of thinking. The Northerners never became anti-slavery in a passionate way. Even up to 1860, most Northerners didn't really care about slavery one way or the other. But at the same time, most Northerners were uncomfortable with slavery, and a minority of Northerners were actually abolitionists, intensely passionate about stopping slavery. But that was always a minority. Nevertheless, the rise and continued growth of slavery was a problem to many Northerners who were uncomfortable with it. So as we go through, we can see that more and more events caused a widening division between North and South. In 1820, I say that there was an event that caused a further growth in divisions, and I say fill in this event with one appropriate cause of sectionalism that occurred this year. So I'll put that on the timeline, 1820. And you do not explain in this box what it says you should explain, but rather you explain on the timeline template that I provide you what that event was and how it works in sectionalism. So here we see that 1824, there was a corrupt bargain allegation in the election of 1824. How did this increase sectionalism? Well, John Quincy Adams was mainly popular with Northerners, whereas Andrew Jackson, who felt that he had been maltreated in the election, mistreated, he was mainly popular with Southerners. Let's close that. And as we see, uh, 
1831, you could fill in the box, or rather the space in the timeline, with the event that occurred that year that furthered the division between North and South. There's a picture here, and I'll provide the picture of this individual as a clue on the timeline to help you with that. Also in 1831, there was another event that caused North-South divisions, and you'll have to supply the name and the way in which that caused divisions in the space on the template. Now we take a closer look at the rest of the timeline from 1840 to 1860, and you see that here is where you fill in most of the information that you have to su supply for the assignment. But first, let's take a look at those that are supplied for you. In 1845, you have the annexation of Texas. I want you to consider how did this promote sectionalism. It says, add an instance to the timeline to explain how and show when. There will be a space for you to do that. And then it says 1847, and there'll be a space for this. Explain in this box on the template which existing factor that this new factor worsened or intensified. So I want you to go back and find something on that timeline that was made worse by the event that occurred in 1847. And you have to identify that event. And this picture shows you a clue, which won't help you very much. But by reading your textbook, you should be able to find out what this factor was, and in no more than two sentences explain how it worsened a previous factor on the timeline. For 1850, you will have to fill in on the timeline the event which further caused more sectionalism, more division between North and South, and which existing factor did this new factor worsen or intensify. This will provide you a clue for what that new factor was, but you'll have to identify that on the timeline. 1852, what happened in 1852 that was another cause of north-south division? And explain in the place on the timeline which existing factor on the timeline that we've already seen did this new factor worsen or intensify, and how? in no more than two sentences that you add to the timeline. And this picture shows you a clue as to what this new event in 1852 was. But I'm not sure it will help you a whole lot, but it is a clue. Then in 1854, here's a clue for what you need to add for 1854. Explain in the appropriate place on the template timeline, not this video obviously, but the template timeline, what this new factor was and how it worsened or intensified a previous factor already seen on the timeline. 1857. Fill in this event on the template timeline identifying the factor in 1857 which occurred and which made an existing factor that we've already seen on the timeline worse, and how, in no more than two sentences. So you're going to be identifying the new factor as well as the associated existing factor. You'll do the same for 1859 and 1860. If we open up 1859, here's a clue as to what this new factor was and you will be identifying that on the template timeline and explaining on the timeline which existing factor was made worse by this new factor. So you will again be identifying the new factor in 1859, which this picture provides a clue of, and the existing factor earlier in the timeline that this made worse. And, that, and finally, 1860, what was the event that further made north-south divisions worse? This picture provides a clue, and I can enlarge it as so, but I'm not sure the clue will help that much, but it may. But you provide the event that in 1860 made north-south divisions 
worse. Now, of course, a lot of things happened in 1860, but you may not use an act of state secession for this example. Yes, states seceded from the Union towards the end of the year, but you may not use any of those examples as this example. You have to say something else which is represented by this clue. And that you do on the template timeline. And when you've completed the template timeline with all these additions, you can then save it, save it as an image, embed it on a Microsoft Word document, and then submit it for your timeline assignment. Let me know if you have any questions.